finally we get to the final part of this uh, of this sketch so where are we at you can see that I'm uh, okay so I did cheat a bit right I cheated a bit because I had to sketch in quite a difficult background because it's um, it's got lots of true true perspective and false perspective in it <laughs> complicated yeah all right four colors that I'm using they're the four colors of green that I'm going to be using and I've used before exactly the same four uh, green that I've used on the character I'm about to now use on the bottom half of this uh, of this background you'll see what I'm doing now I'm slightly cheating the color as well because really the secondary light source uh, is shooting from the left hand side so really the not the back of the van but the other side of the van the left side that you can see should be the lightest but I'm gonna cheat it because guess what nobody cares as long as it fools the eye nobody cares um, so when I'm talking about false perspective and true perspective, there is true perspective. You see those bricks on the right hand side of the uh, of that kind of mid ground building I've got on the right hand side. That's in true perspective. That's that's real perspective. Those um the layers on them bricks. Uh and the balconies, the the fire escape on the uh on the building behind, that's true perspective. And the perspective of the vehicle is true perspective but I've cheated where those objects are on on a on a plane I've cheated where they are I've moved them around just for the sake the sake of of aesthetics I've moved them when I say I moved them around I've moved them around in my head before I came to this you know sort of a bit I mean I never know what's going to come out frankly but um but I've, sh I've shifted it so that I can fill the background in the way that I want to fill it. Because if I did it, I can't muck about with it enough. If I can, if I if I have to do it for real, sometimes I do stuff for real. But it's cartooning. It ain't real. You know, it's not a real picture. I deal with photorealism completely differently. You know, you can see all them fire escapes and everything. I, it, you know, the lines are not perfect. I do little wobbly lines. I don't use rulers. All that sort of stuff, because. Um, if you saw my Va my Vaughn Bode video, the Vaughn Bode video I did on some pot, Bode didn't use a ruler. You know, he just used drew lines freehand, and you start to really enjoy the aesthetic of of uh, of lines that are drawn a bit wibbly wobbly. You know, they're just drawn with a bit of. I'll just chuck it down. You know, it does the job. It totally does it. So, you'll see. You'll see. So now, maybe you know what I'm up to here, or maybe you don't. It doesn't matter if you don't. I'm doing this bit in real time. I do go back into time lapse in a bit, just to warn you. But the majority of this video is in real time, so you can see what I'm doing. <clears throat> and obviously, I'm going to talk you through it as well. So this is a slightly darker shade that I'm using here than the back of the van. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to cheat some shading here as well. I'm going to cheat some just to make it a bit more interesting just to make the depth a bit more interesting I'm gonna muck about with the color values when we talk about color values we just talk about we're basically talking about going from light to dark dark to light you know chucking a bit of all kinds of stuff you can see I'm done I've done there you go the bumpers got a bit darker there you know it just it all adds depth there we go depth maybe a bit of texture that's what I don't, some people don't really like what alcohol markers do because they're not uh, what's the word uniform enough. You get uniformity when you use paint and paint markers, Poskas, Molotovs. You get a uniformity, as in the colour is all the same, absolutely the same throughout. Alcohol markers you get, you sometimes it can look a bit like watercolour sometimes, but I quite like that. I like it um, because it it can be grainy and it adds texture. <clears throat> so I quite like it. Um, what else to tell you? So yeah, it's okay. So I'm dropping this bit in the background in there, just darken up the background there, and I'm darkening it with the darkest green. And what I'm going to do? I'm going to chuck some black in there and fade it. I'll fade it through from 
from black into that green. So I'll chuck a bit of black in. There we go. Bit of black in there. So you get a really deep shadow in there. Push that right into the background and then go over the edges with the green again. Blend it in and you get a nice blended green. If you haven't got that already, I'll just go over the, the the process again. So what you want to do, you want to lay down your lighter color first, then you lay down your darker color, preferably when it's wet. Wet on wet is always the best. It's always the best. You get much better blends that way. Lighter color, slightly darker color. Go back to your lighter color to blend. There we go. Now what I'm doing here, I'm dropping a darker color down the bottom there. Now I've done it, so I've slightly dicked up here because that's all dry now all the alcohol is dry so you're going to see when I put the lighter color over it doesn't blend as well you see that well not yet because my hands in the way there we go light strokes up there you see that it's it's too it's no, it's a solid line almost so I'm going to go back in now it's wet again put that in dark color again back to my light color and hey presto better blend much better there you go that works better just that's a bit hard line so there you go that's all it needs that's all it needs like i say that's not a true shadow it's not a real shadow it's a fake shadow but just makes it a slightly more interesting you know when your eye looks at the whole the whole picture it just looks slightly more interesting that's all now what I'm gonna do drop a bit of graffiti on uh, on that van just the tail end of it tail end of a bit of uh, a bit of graph can you see what letter I'm doing <laughs> there we go yeah it's an E There you go, E. Drop it in a bit thicker. There you go, like it's come out of a fat cap. And uh, there you have it. Okay, so. And that will just, it will just tie and do a tiny, a tiny bit of fading as it dries. Only a tiny bit. They don't fade very much when they dry, virtually not at all, and don't get, don't ever bank on it. Um, but I, I literally, I'm dealing in like hundreds of a shade and stuff sometimes. But I know these markers really well. I've been working with Stylefire markers for years now. Uh, that's the thing about markers, when you use a, a brand you know really well, get to know a brand really well, you know what they're going to do. You've still got to make swatches. You're going to see later on in this video, when I work with the purples, because the purples for some reason hugely vary sometimes um, uh, and uh, and just to be sure I made some swatches so uh, on, a, on a piece of paper you'll just see it it's a, paper, a piece of paper that sits next to me on the right hand side and I could see what each pen does just for reference so I know so what I'm going to do here I'm darkening the bottom of the, uh, the back of the van again just to make it a little bit more interesting and it's not a true shadow because if you look at the bumper it's not the same colour but it doesn't matter because nobody cares because it, it fools your eye for that moment when you take in the whole picture it fools your eye people get very hung up on stuff you know it has to be this it has to be that. I mean you know great if you're doing photorealism it better be real but this ain't photorealism so cartooning you can get away with all kinds of stuff as long as you make an interesting picture okay so now what are we up to we're gonna just drop a little now these are just these are just guidelines for me really I, don't... <coughs> I just want to know where those ridges go because it's color is going to kill them anyway those lines because I'm gonna I'm gonna cover all this this you see that you see the way this pops out when I'm color it so I'm doing the lightest color at the moment there on these edges that are facing outwards that's all my lightest color my light <laughs> lightest green I can get <coughs> I 
there we go all the, so all these planes are pointing the same way as you'll see this little banister here as well balustrade whatever it's called there we go get rid of them pencil lines otherwise they're there forever that's me nutting the camera accidentally uh, okay so I drop that light color in there on the top Go and in there because that's the same plane. You see, that's the same plane, put in the same direction, and a bit behind, and them little whatever you call them banisters, whatever they are, them there. They're the same as well. They're too thin to do anything with. You can't add. Can't if I try to add extra bits of colour there, you know, if I get it, that's going to go horribly wrong. Don't bother. So, dark, dark green in there. My second darkest colour I'm using for that one. Keep one up my sleeve just in case. There you go. Because that's the plane that's facing away from that light. But I still want to use the same light source to light it. You see what I mean? And in there, there are planes that are facing downwards but I'm using the same green you can get away with that here I'm going to actually do that in black in that, that tiny little plane there come back to that in a second there we go also see I'm looking at this now and I'm seeing that his arm his left arm has got a bit of reflected light on it But I'm going to do that in green as well. I'll drop a bit of green on that in a bit. So, getting rid of a lot of pencil lines, obviously. So, uh, I don't indelibly uh, bond them to the paper. And now I'm doing the tedious process of uh, covering large areas with this colour. So what I'm going to do, just to, you know, this is tedious, all this. So, um, while well, I just block all this in, what I'm going to do, uh, the bottom half is, is green. Here we go, let's speed through it. The bottom half is green. It's faded, and it's a transitional shadow there. A dark shadow, because we're going into purple up the top. See what I've done on those steps there? The door, going from black to dark, like I did under the, under the, uh, under the truck. Just doing the edges of the bricks, bit of shadow on that door frame. Little throw up H down there. H for hush. I'm gonna tag on the put a little subtle tag on the back of that lorry as well for hush. Right, there you go, base fill, windows, dark, dark, really dark. I've gone really dark on them windows. I thought oh, I'm not gonna get really dark on them. Bit of a shadow on that window frame. There you go. Some sods tagged up on that wall there um, there you go we're nearly done there nearly done getting in the background bish bosh bash there that's all details 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 just sped this through because you know just bits and pieces just adding bits tiny bits bits of detail there you go some of them you know wires bits and pieces couple of uh, I just went over the uh, the outline because it's green on green on his right arm and on his right side of his face so I just went over those blacks again that's them them black outlines now this is just like little bits of whatever I do all over me pictures and there we go there you have it there's the finished article finally Hope you enjoyed all that guys all six parts go back if you haven't seen the first bits go back watch them watch all six parts and uh yeah i'll be back uh at some point with some more cheers